Hi everyone, this is Abhinav from PhoneBunch and today we have finally got the Yu Euphoria. Now it runs on Cyanogen OS 12 based on Android 5.0 Lollipop, comes with a Snapdragon 410 quad-core processor, 64-bit Cortex-A53 cores, you have Adreno 306 GPU here as well, you have a 5-inch HD IPS display in the front, clad in Corning Gorilla Glass 3, 2230mAh battery, it is removable, 8MP rear, 5MP front facing camera is also here. Price at just rupees 699. It comes with 2 gigs of RAM and 16 gigs of storage to top on that. Moreover, storage is expandable. So folks, this is the U Euphoria, the second phone after Eureka from the company. So let's see what we get inside the box. First up, you have your special features booklet over here. You have true call integrated as well as box or email support. You have a screen guard within the box, a micro USB to USB data syncing and charging cable a 1.5 amp charger and a 20 to 30 milliamp hour battery. You can see it right there. And a new style of earphones is also included. It looks like the Apple EarPods. I'll definitely have a look at it, how it sounds in our full review. That's everything you get inside the box. So folks, here's the U Euphoria. We have got it in black color, black with silver metallic accents on both the sides. So in the front, you have a five inch display now on both the sides you have metal now this is real metal it's not just made to look like metal at the top 3.5 m audio jack on the right you have the volume rocker and in between them is sandwiched the power button now that's a bit of weird design decision the power button is a bit recessed as well so you can identify it differently at the bottom you have your micro usb data syncing and charging port Moving to the back, you have a 8 megapixel camera LED flash, secondary noise cancellation mic, and this is a satin ring-like structure, which you likes to call it. You can see right there, assembled in India, speaker phone at the bottom as well. The back is a very nice matte finish. The sides are a bit curved, you can see that, and that definitely makes it easier to grip. Now the back cover is removable, it is a bit flimsy, but when on the phone is very solid. So you have two micro SIM card slots on the inside, both can use 4G SIM cards and you have a micro SD card slot which can accept up to 32 gigs of storage. So let's put in the battery and we'll power on the phone for the very first time. So it's a very snug fit for the battery as well. Overall the construction is very solid over here. No creaking, no loose edges, no gaps whatsoever, no flex here as well. So now let's boot up the phone, you can see it started booting. Let me remove this information sheet from up top. So in the front, you have a 5 megapixel camera, you have a proximity and light sensor. And this time around, you have on-screen buttons. So no capacitive keys over here. You have a 5-inch HD IPS display, that's 720p with Corning Gorilla Glass 3 protection. So folks, we have booted into Cyanogen OS 12 based on Android 5.0 Lollipop. The animations do seem a little jerky, but the phone has just booted up. I let it load a little bit. So it has now loaded up and you can see animations are very smooth. No useless apps have come installed. Very few apps, just the basic Google apps and some apps from Cyanogen. Very smooth interface over here. It's very close to stock Android as well. Some theme elements have been changed definitely. So you can see right here we are running Android 5.0.2 to be precise based on Cyanogen OS 12. You can see it right there. Out of that 16 gig storage, you have about 10.93 gigs available. Now we already know that USB OTG is not supported in my hands-on review, I checked that out. And even in this retail unit, you can see that it's not supported. You have about 1.4 gig of RAM, that's free right now. App should be movable to the external SD card, you can see that option right there. Now let's talk about this display. It does have wide viewing angles, but I do notice a little bit of color shifting over here. And there's a bit of tendency to show yellow colors more brightly over here as well. The touch response, however, is quite good. Now let's come to the camera. So you have an 8 megapixel rear, 5 megapixel front facing camera. You can just swipe up and down to move through the different modes available over here. You can see that they apply directly onto the viewfinder. You can choose which modes you want to use as well. On screen buttons, as you can see right there. Focusing is pretty fast over here. The camera does take images very quickly as well. Now I'll just take some sample shots and we'll see how these turn out. Now in our hands-on review, we found that the camera was actually pretty useful in broad daylight. We'll test out the camera in greater detail in our separate camera review. So here's Cyanogen OS's launcher. Several modes available over here. You can change the scroll effect. 
You can add widgets to it as well. Separate app drawer over here. Again, no bloatware on the device. You can customize the quick toggles as well. Theme support is also baked in if we talk about customization. Several themes are available in the Cyanogen store. Now let's test out web browsing. This is the default lollipop keyboard. Smooth to type on as usual. Here's our mobile website. Scrolling is actually pretty smooth over here. Next up, we are moving to our desktop website. Here too, scrolling is actually very smooth. Pinch to zoom is smooth as well. This display has excellent touch response. You can see it right there. Now this is the default dialer from Cyanogen and it comes with true color support built in as well. Now that's a new addition on the device. You have boxer email support as well. Overall, the performance is pretty good on this device. Excellent touch response as well. Everything opens up quickly over here. Multitasking is fine too. Now folks, it's time to wrap up. So the display does seem quite good over here. The touch response is good. The colors might be a bit off, but we'll take a look at that later on. Now this phone has excellent build quality. The metal sidebands definitely make it look more premium. The camera too adds a distinct look to the device. Overall, it's very pleasing to look at. Price at 699, it should be on your radar if you want to buy this phone. Yes, there are some design decisions like the power button in the middle, but you do have double tap to wake, double tap to put the phone to sleep, and I do prefer on-screen buttons now. You have priority interruptions mode available here as well. You have screen pinning available over here as well. So all the bells and whistles that came with Android Lollipop, including multiple user support, is also present on the Euphoria. Now we'll definitely test out how it performs in gaming, how its camera performs as well. Is it comparable to the Redmi 2 Lenovo A6000 Plus? Priced at rupees 699 with Cyanogen OS 12, 2 gigs of RAM and 16 gigs of storage makes the UU Euphoria a very interesting device indeed. We'll be back with more. Don't forget to hit that subscribe and like button. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, let us in the comment section. And as always, have a great day.